Welcome back to another very exciting tutorial here at the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Twitter at JRFromPTC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a blurry background in Photoshop. What we're trying to do here is fake the shallow depth of field focus that you typically see in portrait photography. For this tutorial, we're going to use a photo of my friend Cheryl. She runs a popular fashion blog. You can find her at O2BeAmused.com. As you can see, this photo was shot with a wide depth of field, so the background is not as blurry as we would want it to be. So to create our blur background effect, we're going to use the lens blur filter. But first, we need to tell Photoshop what areas are going to be blurry and what areas are going to be in focus. You can use a simple selection to determine that, but I recommend using an alpha channel instead. It allows you to easily create more complex selections if your image requires it. This mask or alpha channel will be a depth map. It will allow us to blur the objects in the image exactly as we want to. Anything that is black will be treated as if it were in focus, and anything that is white will be treated as if it were out of focus. And obviously the grays will be different levels of focus. So we're going to use this photo of Cheryl, and we first have to determine what's going to be in focus and what's going to be out of focus. So we're going to use an alpha channel, which is pretty much the same thing as a mask. Black hides, white reveals. In this case, black is going to keep things in focus, and white will make things out of focus. So we first need to make a selection out of Cheryl since she will be in focus. I'm going to use the quick selection tool. And I just want to mention that I'm going to make a really, really quick selection here, but I want you to take your time on your image since selections are really important when using the lens blur filter. So I'm just going to quickly make a selection around her. And as you can see, I'm not taking too much time, but I'm not doing that bad of a job. Hold Alt, Option on the Mac, click and drag to deselect the areas that you accidentally selected, like in between her arms here. And I'm going to zoom in just to show you something. I couldn't get the ring here, and it might be a little hard using the Quick Selection tool, so you can use the Q key on the keyboard for the Quick Mask mode. With the Brush tool, you can paint with black to deselect and paint with white to select. So I'm using the bracket keys now to adjust the size of the brush. and Currently, my foreground color is black, so when I paint, I deselect. But if I want to switch that to black, I can just press X on the keyboard to swap foreground and background color, as you can see there. So with white, I'm going to select her finger there and her ring, and I can just go around and hold X when I want to take something out and press X again when I want to paint something back in. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to take too much time on the selection just because I want to keep this tutorial short and I want to show you what you came here to see. And I'm going to press Q again to bring the selection back. I'm going to click again on the quick selection tool and in the options bar with the selection still active, I'm going to click on refine edge. That's going to bring up the refine edge window and I just want to smooth out the edges here and that's pretty good. I'm going to press OK. So we're going to work with this selection. Now remember what I said earlier. Black is going to keep things in focus. And I'm going to build my depth map by using regular layers. In this case, I'm going to use a solid. So I'm going to go into the new adjustment layer icon and select solid color. And I'm going to use black. And I'm going to press OK. Now I'm going to create a mask that's going to allow me to keep my foreground in focus and my background out of focus. So I'm going to use a gradient for that. I'm going to click on this icon here and make sure that I'm using my default gradient. So I'm going to click on reset gradients and press OK. So I'm going to use black to white and remember black is going to keep things in focus. So Cheryl's standing right about here. So I want to keep things in focus there and I'm going to gradually blur the background until we get to the background here where everything should be blurry. So I'm going to make one quick adjustment. I'm just going to Drag this to the left a little bit just to blur this area a little bit faster. Like right about there. And then I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to press OK one more time. Then I'm going to click and drag this down below the shape there that created her body. And I'm actually going to select both of these now by holding Shift and clicking on both, pressing Control G, Command G on the Mac to put those into a group. Now that we have that in a group, I'm going to click on the Channels panel. And it doesn't matter what channel we click on, they're all the same. Duplicate any one of those. So click on it, 
drag it over into the new channel icon here at the bottom and you can rename it whatever you want. So we'll just call this one Death Map Cheryl. And go back into the RGB by clicking on the RGB here on top, click on layers and disable the group. Now we're gonna work on creating the actual blur. This filter is destructive, so you always wanna work on a duplicate of the original layer. Press Control J, Command J on the Mac. Then go into Filter, Blur, Lens Blur, and we're gonna blur the image. First, make sure that you have Preview enabled so we can see the changes that we're making as we go along. Then under Death Map, choose the alpha channel that we just created, Death Map Cheryl. Notice what happens. Immediately, Cheryl is in focus and the background is out of focus. Notice the ground is in focus where she's standing and is gradually getting out of focus the further back that we recede into the image, which creates a very realistic effect. Now, I do realize that this is not 100% accurate in terms of how a lens would represent depth of field, but for this tutorial, I wanted to maintain a simple mask so that I can explain how the filter works. But once you've mastered the filter, feel free to adjust the mask accordingly so that it matches a realistic lens more accurately. So back on the lens blur filter, you'll notice that one thing has changed, the cursor. Notice how it's now a crosshair. So if I click on the background, notice that the background is now in focus and it gradually gets out of focus. And I can click on Cheryl and now she'll be in focus and it will gradually be out of focus. Now we don't really need to worry about that too much because we created the death map knowing that she was going to be in focus. I'm just mentioning it just in case you accidentally click somewhere on the image and you invert the focus. So click on her so she stays in focus. But you don't need to worry about that as long as you create the accurate death map. And I just want to point out that the controls under the iris label are all controls that try to mimic a real camera. For example, the shape, which is sort of like the aperture opening for the lens. The lower the number, the less blur there is. And the higher the number, the more blur there will be. Then we have the radius. This is the amount of blur that the filter is going to create. You can also think of it as the lens aperture. So if I bring this down, you will see that there's less blur in the background. If I bring this up, the background will be more blurry. So adjust that accordingly. So in my case, maybe somewhere there. Blade curvature and rotation don't make that big of a difference. And you can slide those around. But as I mentioned, the change is not that dramatic. Then we have the specular highlights. And this will help you create the bokeh effect. If I bring the brightness up and bring the threshold down a little bit, you'll see this area here get brighter. This is probably not the best image to show you the bokeh effect. But in a different image, you would get that effect. Also, you have noise. With the blurs, you remove any noise or film grain. This helps you add it back in. I'm going to just increase that all the way just so you can see how that works. If you uncheck this, then you get noise with color. In this case, the original photo didn't have any noise with color, so I would leave that checked to monochromatic. And by the way, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, to turn the Cancel button into a Reset button, and reset the settings. And we're all looking at the same thing. So I'm going to go back into Source, select Death Map Cheryl, and I'm going to increase the radius to blur the background even more. And I'm going to add just a little bit of noise. So I'm going to click on here and just tap the up key on the keyboard just once, just to add a tiny bit of noise. Then I'm going to press OK. So this is before and this is after. Now you might be thinking at this point, this is a lot of work. Why don't you just duplicate the layer, go to Filter, Blur, Lens Blur. Don't even worry about the death map simply blur the whole thing and make a selection around Cheryl and mask that out. And actually, let me invert the selection so you can see why. Control I, Command I on the Mac. Notice that ghosting effect that we get. That's why that filter is so important. The filter doesn't allow the things inside of that selection to become blurred and you avoid getting this ghosting effect. So that's the difference with the filter and the death map and without. So that's one of the reasons why I went to the trouble of creating that death map. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you don't necessarily need to create the death map. You can start with just a selection and just use that. I'm just going to click on the original layer for now and notice that the selection is active. We're going to filter, blur, lens blur, and I can invert the selection. And you can see she's in focus, but I don't have that nice gradient that I created earlier. So the way that you create the selection 
is very important for this effect to work properly. So I would just learn how to use the alpha channels and not be intimidated by them. And if you're already using them, then great. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit this to screen so we can see everything. And I'm going to quickly show you how to create that glow effect that's really popular in portrait photography. So I'm just going to click on the top layer here, add a new layer with the brush selected. I'm going to increase the size of the brush by tapping on the right bracket key on the keyboard, switching from black to white as my foreground and just tapping in the middle ones like so. I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate that layer. Press Control T, Command T to transform and scale that way up. And actually, I'm going to zoom out since I want to scale it even further. Maybe something like that. Then create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer and click and colorize. But I only want this effect to affect the layer we just created there at the bottom. So I'm going to click on this icon here to create a clipping mask. Then I'm going to choose a yellow color. I know you really can't see it there, so I'm going to bring down the lightness and increase the saturation. And it's not looking very good right now. And that's because this layer here, and I'm going to call this outer glow, by the way, outer glow. That's because the outer glow and the center glow need to have a different blend mode. So I'm going to select both of them while holding shift and clicking and switching it over to linear dodge add. And now I can come in here and adjust the lightness and the saturation and the color. Maybe something like that. I can hold shift, click on the top layer, hold shift and click on the bottom, press control G, command G on the Mac to put those into a group. And I can press V on the keyboard, click and drag to move and put that somewhere out here maybe. And I can adjust the fill to control the brightness of that glow. One thing I may want to do is above the Cheryl copy, I can create a new layer, go to gradient map, click on this icon here and go to photographic toning and press OK. And you can select one of these gold ones here, maybe this one here and change the blend mode to soft light. Bring the opacity down and start dragging it up until you get to an area that you're happy with. So maybe, maybe something like that. At this point, I'm going to zoom in just so we could see what's going on. I'm going to put all these effects into one layer. So we have the glow, the gradient overlay, and the blur. So select all of them. Press Control G, Command G on the Mac to put those into a group. So that's before. And that's after. And one quick last thing that I want to mention before we finish that I just remembered on the Cheryl copy here, I'm going to zoom in. And if there's jagged edges there, that's because your mask is not as good as it could have been. So you can go back and make adjustments to your mask, or you can use something like the blur tool here to create the blur on the edges. But to be frank with you, you probably want to create a better selection to start with. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you enjoy the tutorial, don't forget to click that like button and share this video with a friend. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Photoshop training channel now. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.